Every theory of happiness is characterized by the classification, coordination, and organization of all the phenomenal contents immanent to the basic field of happiness. Of course, such criteria might be established from a doctrine. This means that a theory will arrange and articulate its structure while, above all, taking into consideration other theories or doctrines in a critical manner, coming to see them as unacceptable or erroneous theories or doctrines. Therefore, it is necessary to establish a typology of happiness-related theories, although the difficult thing is, in fact, to find the right criteria. Of course, we can establish various material criteria from which to obtain a variety of theories biological, social, theological, dogmatic, mythological, philosophical, etc. However, surely the most appropriate criterion that we can follow when trying to establish a typology of theories is the formal criterion. From this criterion, we will take into account the theories regarding the regions of happiness, positive happiness, or unhappiness, negative happiness where the happiness field is polarized, as well as those regarding the region of non-happiness or the neutral state. And in any case, it will always be necessary to have a doctrine that functions as a platform for the theory. In this regard, it must be borne in mind that both concepts and ideas of happiness, as well as those of sadness, function as conjugate concepts. Conjugate concepts consist of pairings of ideas such as space-time, base superstructure, subject-object that maintain a series of relationships between them called conjugation schemes. From this point of view, it could be said that the pairing happiness-sadness could be analyzed largely as a case of concept conjugation. But this conjugation far from presenting itself in accordance with diameric connection schemes, has hidden this characteristic, appearing instead in accordance with the various forms of metameric connection. This masks conjugation schemes through others of juxtaposition, fusion or reduction. Thus, if we assume that the field of happiness is divided into two polarized regions, positive happiness and negative happiness, we could understand the relationship between these two regions according to conjugation schemes between happiness or sadness-related terms. The happiness-sadness pairing thus functions in the same way as conjugate concepts. Consequently, we would obtain five types of possible theories about happiness. Reductionist theories, from happiness to unhappiness, from unhappiness to happiness, Radical dualist theories, according to which happiness-sadness suppose independent causes and therefore also theories, and fusionist theories, which refer to happiness and unhappiness through a third term, like when we speak of the state of nirvana. And finally, theories of correlation and dimeric conjugation between happiness and sadness. Adhering to the metameric scheme of reduction as the criterion for the typology of theories of happiness, we will either postulate that unhappiness derives from happiness or that happiness derives from unhappiness, emerging from opposite terms within the field of happiness. However, we must also take into account the possibility of a neutral perspective that involves a correlation between both terms in the happiness-sadness pairing. Based on these criteria, a typology of theories of happiness is established, organized into three main categories. A. Top-down theories. These are the theories that derive unhappiness from happiness. Here, the point is to reduce unhappiness to happiness. We are facing the metameric reduction scheme. B. Ascending theories. They are the theories in which happiness is derived from unhappiness. It is a metameric exercise where happiness is reduced to unhappiness. C. Neutral theories. These are theories that do not accept the metameric reduction scheme, neither top-down nor ascending, but instead belong to another type of correlational relationships, or, in the extreme, to conjugation itself. 
At this point, it is necessary to note that this typology involves a reanalysis that, in turn, presupposes the existence of different working theories, but according to their own emic criteria. Each of the types that falls into this typology appears linked to more elements in its field and related to other doctrinal issues of various kinds, theological, cosmological, or political. In any case, mapping theories of happiness is not all. It is also necessary to take into account doctrines of happiness, as, when combined with theories, they involve certain conceptions of happiness.